Hey guys, uh, so when I'm not working in Blender, I'm usually playing Age of Empires Definitive Edition and uh, when I'm not playing Age of Empires, I'm usually watching Age of Empires live streams. Uh, if you're a big fan of Age of Empires Definitive Edition, you probably know where I'm going with this. Uh, but uh, I like watching T90 Official and uh, he has this animation thing that he has for his intros and uh, stuff like that and I found it really interesting. Uh, this is a slower version but uh, he has a few variations of this so I thought I would give it a try and see if I can do it in uh, Blender. Now this is what I've managed so far. Let me just play for you uh, a shot that I've uh, rendered so far. I haven't rendered the entire thing. Now I'm still making adjustments but uh, it's also supposed to be looping, but I haven't rendered all the frames uh, that I need to be rendered. Just wanted to do this story really quickly. So, yeah, let's look at how we can do this. Now, you can also do quite a few interesting things with this. So, say you wanted to do some, have some bokeh effect in your background. I'll just have to remove, reduce the focus distance quite significantly, and you can see now we have some bokeh if it's going on so you can see I mean, let me reduce uh, the particle count here so that things can uh, play my smoothly you can see I don't know where you could use that but I think yeah you could use it somewhere uh, maybe let me just change my focus distance oh Yeah, so you can do some interesting th things with this. Uh, let me just show you how I set everything up. So uh, the first thing I did is uh, let me first turn off all these modifiers so that you can see that this is a very simple setup. Go to display this. So I have a plane here with a few subdivisions and then I add a subdivision surface so that I can have more subdivisions on top of that so that I can use a simple deform modifier which you can find under modifiers simple deform uh, I'm using a twist here I didn't change anything uh, for the default settings so it gave me this simple bend and I copied this or duplicated it to have another simple deformer uh, this, this time I changed uh, the type to bend instead of twist uh, to get this twist and now uh, then I uh, added another extra shrink wrap modifier uh, this time I changed the axis of origin to this empty here so that when I animate this the entire uh, mesh also animates so it's just using the coordinates of this object uh, if I move this that also changes but uh, Rotating it means I can uh, make this loop quite easily. Let me just show you here. Let me change the frame rate so that this is faster. Maybe faster. <coughs> you can see that uh, he is supposed to be looping because I'm just rotating this. You see, there is no jumps in that. Now, the reason for that is that I set the rotation, this the beginning rotation and the end rotation to be the same so it starts at zero and then ends at uh, something like uh, 360 yeah so that it loops so this rotation controls this screen crop modifier you can see if i disable that uh, the, we don't get any animation on uh, the let me see how that looks with uh, the particle system and everything it doesn't look that bad but i uh, want this so this is animated by the empty to have that and then I added a particle system uh, to it just a hair particle system and uh, because we are going to I was planning on using a lot of particles if you can see in uh, his videos these are hundreds of maybe millions of particles so uh, unfortunately if it doesn't render point clouds are uh, like you see here like you see in here you'd have to have geometry to actually render render those particles so you so and because i wanted millions of particles uh if i used geometry 
it would take a lot of time and it would be very, very laggy. Uh, so what I did, I rendered hair particles, but uh, made sure that uh, under the settings here, the render settings, I changed to, uh, to strips instead of strand. Because you can see the difference there. You get that single strand of hair, then you get this kind. For strips, you have this kind of shape, triangular shape. And uh, because hair strands are rendered differently, they don't really take a lot of computation power. You can use millions more than uh, polygons. That's why I chose them. And uh, usually the hair is too long, so I reduced the hair length and also reduced the segments because I didn't need uh, that many. And uh, also, the hair shape i made sure that uh, they're a bit thick but not too tall so you can see you can play with this as you want and uh, i didn't want to render the mesh itself so i went to the display settings and uh, turned that off you can see how i'm controlling uh, the size of the meshes so hair particles render fast faster than uh, meshes if i switch this out for a mesh it would take way too long you, you can see this is the polygon as i was trying i was trying to use as the render object or render instance for the hair but uh, it was taking up a lot of computation power let me just show you what i mean here so if i change from render as path to object and selected this object it would be way too laggy and you can see you start to see uh, those triangles instead of circles uh, that of points that we want so uh, to make them look like points you would need more geometry uh, so that this looks like a, a circle so that this is a circle and you can see you're just adding more geometry uh, to your scene and uh, right now I'm only displaying 10,000 but I wanted more than that I wanted at least a, a hundred thousand for this so it would just increase the computation power so instead of using that i chose to go on and use a path which is way faster you can even see uh, the difference in frame rate there so this is object sorry object you can see our frame rate is around 10 and if i switch this to path this gives us better results uh, and a better frame rate so it means it renders faster uh, without using a lot of computation power like if we used a polygon. So that's how I managed to get those and uh, also reduce the bispline uh, segments. Uh, that might also increase geometry within the hair itself. So I reduced that. Uh, you can play with the, these hair shapes settings uh, to get the kind of shape you're going for if you wanted to do this. And uh, now with all that, uh, all you are left to do is to, do, to have is I add a material to this. Now the way I set up the material is that I have this emissive material uh, set up uh, to have this. And you can just look at the materials. Basically, what I'm also I'm also mix I'm just mixing it with a translucent shader so that if I have lights in the scene, uh, these emissions can uh, uh, these particles can uh, are affected by the light in our scene. So just gives it a little bit of depth. You can see you can even add color, colored lights. Uh, if I just used a plain emission shader, it wouldn't, they wouldn't react, the particles would not react to the lights we add in here. So that's why I chose to add them there. And basically that's it I think it's nothing fancy here you're just doing something simple very quickly and very easily you just need to play with your uh, depth of field and uh, everything else should be easy to work out and just select the text object
So you can see how you can create some easy, cheap effects without doing too much work. And yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Uh, if you want to watch the entire timelapse, it will be over my second channel. So.